Hi, I'm James Schellinglaw, and I'm here with Paula Carroll, who is the Sales and Marketing Director for Ashford Castle in Ireland. And look, Ashford, I'll admit, is one of our favorite places, and we've been there uh, many times, a couple, at least a couple of times, and, it, and Paula and uh, Niall, the general manager there, are excellent hosts, and it is really an amazing place. So we, we have a a little bit of a place in our heart for Ashford Castle and we'll continue to have. But the reason, uh, here we are and we're interviewing uh, Paula on International Women's Day. And uh, Paula has the distinction of having been in her post for um, quite some time. And it, it's, it was a rarity back in the time when she got it, but she has persevered and she is really recognized as kind of the heart and soul and spirit of Ashford Castle. And we're gonna talk to her, uh, Paula about her career uh, as well as what she thinks about, you know, opportunities for women and things like that uh, in the travel industry today versus the, when she first started. And you're going to find out about all that and more on Insider Travel Report. Now, first of all, Paula, how are you and where are you? Well, hi, James, and it's great to see you. I am sitting, you're in my, my sitting room, actually, which Very nice. I hope one day on the west coast of Ireland, I'm on Galway Bay. That's where I live. That's wonderful. I'd love to be there. And you say it's a nice day today? Uh, no, I can't say that it's a nice day today. It's, <laughs> it's always, I mean, it's always beautiful in, the, in, in Ireland, but some days are better than others. And today is just one of those little challenging ones you know that occasionally where we get rain occasionally right well, today right. is one of those days <laughs> well i have to tell you the very first time i went to ashford castle and everybody told me about how it rained in ireland all the time and that just happened to be during a summer when you had very little rain and everybody said you know we usually it's it's sort of dark and kind of raining and i said why would you tell me that you i want to believe that it's beautiful and sunny in ireland all the time and I, the other thing i remember it was, it was at that time, and this is before your renovation, there was no air conditioning in uh, uh, Ashford. <laughs> and so we had a little rotary fan that uh, cooled us in the evenings. And I remember a wonderful dinner, but a very hot dinner in the, in the formal dining room where I was just saying, everybody should just take their jackets off. Because it was, it was, it was a, 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 in fact, uh, now, now you're general manager and and uh, you know he was there, and I was like, you know, just take the jackets off. But it, it was a wonderful time in Ireland, and also, but it, they said it was drought too. Uh, so uh, because you don't really have any reservoirs, so <laughs> it's uh, it was an interesting experience. So yeah, no, I, I'm, it sounds like I mean I'm I'm here in the states, and we have both cold and hot, and all kinds of things going on. Sure. Let, let's talk a little bit about what we're here for and in your career at the castle, so to speak. I would like to have a career at the castle. Actually, look at that. <laughs> it sounds, sounds like you, now you've been sales and marketing director at Ashford, I believe for, uh, I, I should say it, 34 years. Uh, when were not, you? Not, not quite. It, 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 34 this November. 34 this November. Oh, well, we, we gave you too much of an anniversary there. We should have. We <laughs> 33 and uh, six months. Okay. So that, now when, when were you first hired at the hotel and what did you do before that? Um, well, actually it's an interesting, yeah, interesting because I, I had a passion. I did marketing, which is not a, not a, a hotel subject per se, but I, I studied marketing in college in Dublin, which is where I'm from. And um, I suppose I decided that I would, I did initially go and work in, in Europe, as an accountant. And of course, one day I remember looking at this thing called a contometer. Now there's not very few people would remember what a contometer was, but it was a contometer. And I remember thinking, one of us has to go. And this was structured, you know, it was fixed to the actual, uh, I was working for the Shell Corporation in Holland. Right. And I remember thinking one of us has to go because all I wanted to do, because I was talking about it all the time, was, was actually was promoting my country. And I thought, Maybe I could make a career out of this. Maybe I could do something about this. So I came home and I applied to two companies, uh, Board Fulcher, which is the Irish, the precursor to the Irish Tourist Board, and Aer Lingus, the national airline. And I was successful in both, but opted to join Board Fulcher, the Irish Tourist Board, right. in order to enable me to start marketing my country. And to be honest about it, James, that's how I got started. So okay. by, by, by default, um, I was in board fortune for a period of time and I was headhunted. And I, I remember distinctly uh, phoning my late parents, whom I adored, 
and my late parents and I said, look, um, can we meet for, no, you know, we've been invited for dinner. Would you join me for dinner? And they said, absolutely, whereabouts? And I said, in the, in the Ashling restaurant of the Shelburne Hotel. Okay. So we came out and we had dinner in the Shelburne and my father, who was actually, they, n- neither of my parents ever drank, but my father was very involved in politics. And of course, he would have known the Shelburne and would have known the constitution and yada, 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 which we got, by the way, ad infinitum over dinner again. <laughs> and um, he said, well, what are we doing here? And I said, well, actually, I said, um, they've offered me a job. Okay. And my brother, my father, my, my, my mother was very, very, my, of course, I am my father's daughter, by the way, because my mother was a very gentle soul, very gentle, lovely lady. And she looked at me and she said, but you're not taking it. And I said, well, I don't know. And my father, I, to, this, to, to this day, I will never, never forget, forget the words. You have a good pensionable job where you are. You couldn't possibly be considering any other move. And I remember... I think it was that word pensionable at the time. Like bearing in mind, this is in the early 80s, right? And I'm thinking, oh my God. So in my little naivety and in my innocence, for the first time, I think I actually went against my father Mm -hmm. and I did graciously accept the position with Trust House Forte, which is again, not a lot of people would remember. And I decided I would start, I, I start in, Trust House Forte Hotels in Ireland, ending up as director of sales in the Shelburne Hotel. Which is a lovely, lovely hotel, yeah. And then I was at a presentation before this, before all of these things, I was at a presentation in St. Regis Hotel in New York, and we had just about started technology per se in video times or whatever, and the technology failed and I stood up as I would because I can, as you probably know me well enough to know that I don't exactly, I'm not the shrinking violet type of person. So I consi- continued, continued my presentation without uh, artificial aids and unknown to me, unbeknownst to me, in the audience that evening was the president of what was then Ashford Castle and Dromoland Castle because Dromoland was just coming into the fort at the time. Right. And I didn't know that. But anyway, then I was headhunted down to the West. And to be honest about it, at the time, I had already gone to Kelvin Houchen, who was a very senior person in New York in Trust House Forte. Mm-hmm. And I'd said, you know what? I'd like a job in New I'd like to li- work in the States. So I could show you the next time that I meet you, remind me to show you my job offer from Trust House Forte based uh-huh. in Chicago. Okay. So in the midst of all of this, I get a a call from Bill Dowling because obviously word gets out in this business. And he said, "Uh, hey, Paula, we heard that you're thinking of leaving the Shelburne. We'd like to offer you a job. And I went, no, thanks very much. No, thank you. I'm I'm going to Chicago. So he said, well, we'd like like you to go to our lawyers and get a collect a fax. Now, can I tell you that... (laughs) Lawyers, we didn't have. We have solicitors in Ireland, but we also didn't have faxes. We had telex machines. So a fax was something that I was intrigued by. And I was like, oh, my God, a fax, (laughs) what is that? So I decided it was walking distance from the Shelburne anyway to where the the, the lawyer's office was. And I decided I'd go up and collect the said fax. And I did. I read the contents. And really, my dilemma was Chicago or Kong. (laughs) <laughs> so to be honest about it, cheeky that I was and still am, I basically rang Trust House Forte and asked them to defer on the job offer in Chicago. That I go down to Kong, I'd be there. It would be give me great resort experience because I didn't know resorts. I'd stayed in Ashford before, by the way, before I went to work there. Right. And I said, but it gave me great experience from a resort standpoint because it would be both Ashford and, and Dromoland Castles. I mean, this is an extraordinary opportunity. Yeah, defer on the job. And I'll be back in a year. Okay. And they said, yes. Wow. So I started on the 9th of November, 1987, as Director of Sales and Marketing, Ashford and Dremoland Castles. And you know what? I can honestly sit here and tell you, I was, I blessed beyond blessed beyond blessed. So that's how come, I, I, that's how I got started. Well, that's amazing. And so you never decided, never left Ashford. What, what do you do? What do you attribute your success in the sales and marketing post uh, at Ashford? Well, to be honest about it, and, and I will be honest and say, James, I mean, I am blessed with the fact that I have had the luxury of working with three general managers in that period of time. 
One was Rory Murphy, who is a legend in his own lifetime, was, is still, I mean, he's still with us and still a great friend and mentor. The second was Mark Nolan. And at the time, Mark in Drumoland, uh, was Mark was number two in Ashford when I started. And Mark then went down to be number one in Drumoland. And then he had the, the, the he obviously had the intelligence to recruit a, a, num- a number, a, a young man who subsequently became his number two, who was Mr. Niall Rochford. Right. And then when things, when Rory retired, Niall got the number one position in Ashford. So quite frankly, I consider myself absolutely beyond blessed to have worked for three captain, three doyens in the hospitality industry, in the hotel industry, but three absolute gentlemen who basically left me to do what I was, they expected me to do because that was my job. They expected me. And to be honest about it, I've had nothing but encouragement, nothing but, you know, a, a now I'm not saying that we always agree because perish the thought, because if we didn't have discourse and we didn't have discussion, uh, we wouldn't get things done. I mean, at the end of the day, but right. it's an extraordinary healthy relationship. So technically I've been working with Niall for 30 years, albeit it's only 19 years this year, 20. No, I'm telling a lie. I'm working with him 30 years, but it's 19 years he's in Ashford this year because he was 10, 20 years this year, I think it is because he was 10, 11, 10 in, in Dromoland as well. So just blessed the best. <laughs> What can I say? Oh, well, well, I know, I know Mark, and I know Nile very well uh, uh, over the years, and they are, as you say, wonderful gentlemen. Gentleman. Managers and uh, Nile, you know, uh, is is just a real gentleman. Mark, I've interviewed as well at Dremoland. Uh So, you know, you you were very well served by having those, those gentlemen as uh, your your bosses over the years. Now, what what do you think? Uh, uh, how, have attitudes changed about women in executive sales and marketing posts since you arrived at Ashford? Uh, uh, Very your- much so. Very much so. Because you see, when, when I started, I suppose I would have been considered a maverick because quite frankly, all of those positions were held by males. And now if you look at the industry, you will see the majority of time. Now we're, we're getting a balance. We're getting more to a balance now, which I'm very, which is healthy. Very, very healthy. But by and large, it was all, Male dominated, then it became very female dominated, right. and now it's beginning to balance out. So yes, there has been changes, of course. Yeah, we're happy to see that. I know it's uh, we're still talking about um, you know empowering women, and and mm. I you know I I've been lucky enough to know a lot of wonderful women in the in the in the hotel profession and who have become mm. general managers or high level sales and marketing. So it mm. is happening, but it's, it's sometimes a little slower than a lot of people still want. And mm. we still see some elements of that kind of discrimination. But now uh, people often call you the spirit of Ashford, Ashford Castle. I, I know Niall probably wonders if he should be the spirit, right, too, because he's been there just as long almost. Uh, how, how have you sort of kept that enthusiasm for the castle through all this time? Because to be honest, James, I'd have to answer that by saying the reason why I stayed for the length of time that I did was because I actually fell in love passionately with the people of Ashford. And to this day, it is that that passion, that pride that they take in their professional duties that I continue to support. Right. And the bottom line is they are the most amazing people. I mean, we, I, I, I use the, the, the adage that we've got 800 years of history and amongst only 29 staff members, of which I'm included myself at 33 years now, we have over 800 years of service. Mm. Amongst the 292 staff, we've over 1,800 years of service. So that is in itself remarkable. Right. But it's also remarkable because you have no idea, well, you have because you've been there. But those people that I have, I'm the front face of, that I have the privilege to be the front face of, those people are the kindest, nicest people to each other. Right. It's not for show. It's not for the guests. It's not for the owners. It's amongst each other. So there's a, a respect and a, 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 an understanding, a helpfulness that you just wouldn't believe. I mean, it's, right. it's, they're extraordinary people. So. Yeah. That's, yes. That's the, that's the secret. Now, now, obviously, Ashford Castle got a major refurb, refurb, refurbishment about, I think it's three, four years ago. Sorry? 
Restoration, dear James. Ah, restoration. restoration. Is, I would agree with that because they haven't really, it, it's all the soft goods are wonderful, but you've no. added such things as no. a wine cellar and a spa and even a full lodge really up, up above there. So, all right. So your restoration about three, four years ago after it was acquired by the Tolman family and sure. became part of Red Carnation. Now, has that both helped the castle and your ability to sell and market it? Well, I, I go back to go forward because quite frankly, I have to go back to go forward. Um, it would never have dawned on me at any stage during even the challenging years that we had in Ashford. that Ashford wasn't the number one hotel in Ireland. Right. So that never entered my little head. I, maybe I'm a little bit slow. I don't know. So even when we were positioning rooms, depending on the wind or, or whatever might happen, Ashford to me was always the best. And that's why I continued to market accordingly. Right. Roll on, we went through a rather difficult period between 2008 and 2013 before the Tolmans came in. And I can honestly say it's probably best left unsaid because that's the only time of my, my, my entire tenure there that I actually felt, I really felt upset for, for everybody. I mean, for everybody. But anyway, then the Tolmans moved in and they decided to invest 100 million dollars on a complete restoration of Ashford Castle. They re-leaded the entire roof. They replaced over 800 windows in the castle. Mm -hmm. They introduced things like you were saying earlier about your air conditioning, which we right. never thought we'd ever have or need, but you know, it's getting more and more. They gave us 83 of the highest standard bedrooms available on the Irish market, individually, right designed bedrooms. They gave us the most beautiful artwork. They gave us the most beautiful Murano chandeliers. Of course it made, I mean, it really and truly, it was everything that Ashford deserved. Right. And I have to say, and that is why the team are so, if, if you think the professionalism and, and passion was, was, was you know, in, in the past was, was, was good. My God, you'd want to see everybody. They're beaming from here to here. As indeed I am myself, by the way. <laughs> no, no. Well, you know, the thing is, you, you, but you also say the other key, they kept the team. They kept your they, team. They, can I just tell you, they kept the entire team whilst we were closed during the short period that we were closed for, because they, they also understood that it was the, the team, the heartbeat of Ashford is the people, are the people of Ashford. Right. And, that, and the Tolmans are business people. They've been in this business an awfully long time and they saw that too. So, Equally at the moment, we are very, very grateful to have them as owners because, again, our team is all ready to come back whenever we can. Well, clear, so, clearly yeah. Ashford also became the number one hotel in their Red Carnation group. Uh, it really is. the you know They've had wonderful hotels, and I've been to many of them, but, mm. but Ashford is a very special place. They're the very special people, and I think Thank they you, recognize James. that, and they wanted to invest in something like that. Thank you. That's what they've done. Now, talk, talk a little bit about, we talked a little bit, what, 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 how do you just keep a fresh perspective on your job with sales and marketing director? What, what's the secret to that? Well, you see, there's every, every, the industry changes. I mean, you know, there's always been challenges in the industry. You go 9-11, you go Ebola, you go foot and mouth disease, you go, I mean, the, end, the list is endless. The collapse of Wall Street collapses. I mean, they affect right. us, you know. It, it, so every day or every, I can't ever say to you that every single day, I don't know. I think I know, but I really don't know because the trajectory can change on a heartbeat. And that's what I love. It is your ability to respond to those challenges. And also, I think, you know, technology is something that I wouldn't be, you know, I wouldn't be a, a fan of because, I mean, I'd prefer to be giving you a big hug and having a chat with you over a cup of tea or a drink Absolutely. or whatever. But this is, is as good as it's going to get. And, and, you know, I've had to embrace this. And, and I suppose it's the ability to obviously to learn. Now, do I know everything that goes on? No, I don't. But I don't need to either. Because I have an amazing team that understand a lot of things that I don't, but I understand figures. So I can read whatever we're, we're, we're doing or how many followers we have or whatever the case may be. So, you know, you, you can't, none of us can actually know everything. And I, right. I, I challenge anybody to say that they, they would know everything about anything. No, absolutely. Now, so, has, any, has anything changed about the guests you cater to at Ashford Castle over the years? 
No, I think I, I think we've you see we've always had a very core um, a core following of guests both from the states and from Ireland. And to be honest about it, they are well the states in particular. I mean, they're they, they're families that have been becoming years and years and year over year. I mean, and they it's their Irish home. Um, we've got the same scenario in Irish families here. But what has changed is the fact that you know we don't obviously because of the price point that we're at, and we are the number one hotel in the country. Um, I think it's you know people people won't be booking it just for it. You know, they know, right. I mean, no. So our clientele is, is very important to us and everybody that comes through the door, it doesn't make any difference. Everybody gets the same respect and the same welcome. Right. No, everybody. and I experienced that too. You know, I'm just a lowly journalist, so you, you didn't have to welcome me that good, but you know, you guys did a great job. Uh, but it, it's uh, now tell us a little bit about now. Are you open now uh, or are you still, you have an opening date? James, I wish to God if I was open now, darling, I wouldn't be sitting here talking to you in my, in my sitting room. I'd be sitting in my office and I'd be showing you around. But no, unfortunately, we opened for 210 days last year. Right. And we're not even open to date okay. this year on the 8th of March. Any, any, so, prospect, any, any prospects for when that might happen? <laughs> Maybe you could have a, a word with our, our, our government, would you? Because I swear, I'm not too sure that they know themselves. Um, no, but I, 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 you know, no, I can't. I mean, we actually had a, a, a one of our minister, our, our prime minister, who came out with it, it two weeks ago, who came out on national TV to talk about the COVID and where we were going and yada yada yada, and actually mentioned virtually every other sector of in the end of, of business. There wasn't one mention, not one, of hospitality. Well, unfortunately, so, that's that's the case. I think in many governments, we very rarely mention it, even though it's so important. And uh, but you can only hope that you're going to get back in back in in service. You're going to be back and open soon this spring at some point. But uh, how? But to how, be honest, James, we pivoted. We're doing things that we never would have considered doing before. So right. there's a lot going on, even though we're closed. But be, because they're going on because we're closed. So we can right. allow things like Courch, which is a, a, a festival of literature, which happens in the West of Ireland every year. Okay. So Courch actually approached us and, and I looked at it and went, now normally my, my, my stock response would be thank you, but no thank you, okay? But this year, yes, we can let Irish readers, Irish go in because they have a pass. Or, you know, if you're, if you're videoing or whatever, there's certain people that have got, um, they can still work, if you know what I mean. So right. there's a lot of other things that we're pivoting towards and, and doing. And that is enabling, not that we're open, we're not open at all, but um, it's at least it's giving, it's, you know, it's making sure that the brand Ashford stays center and front of everybody's mind. That's, that's, a good, that's a good idea. And obviously last year when you were up and you had a chance to at least start to work on the, the different services uh, that you had to, and, and adaptations you had to I I input for the COVID-19. Completely, so. completely, yeah. completely. So yeah. that you have all the, I, is it, I mean, I'm sure when you reopen, it'll be face masks and social distancing and lots of other precautions that uh, we're starting to, all of us are starting to experience as we get into all these hotels around the world. Well, to be honest about it, we were the first in Ireland to get the GVAC reward, which is the leading hotels accreditation for uh, protocol in, in, introduction. And um, I think, yes, we were very, very quick to clearly to embrace because, you know, and we didn't open, so we've 83 rooms, but we didn't open the 83 rooms. We only opened 65 rooms right. because therefore it allowed us in, in the restaurant that you're referring to, the the, the, the uh, elegant restaurant, the George V dining room. Right. Um, you, we can actually, and again, so we stopped doing buffet breakfasts. We basically yeah. now do a la carte breakfast. We stopped doing juices. We've got to do sommelier. I mean, you know, there's a lot of creative, creative thinking went in to what we now do, but everybody has it now off because we've been doing it for so long now at this stage, well, six months. I mean, when we open again. You'll be all, all ready to go now. Well, uh, we hope, yeah. We hope. Now, you, you have kind of persevered in your post, despite obviously a couple of years ago, you had some health challenges. Uh, uh, what led you to come back from those and, and really retain your, you keep, keep working at Ashford? Is it, is, what's the source of your dedication? The people. I'm going to say it again and again and again. If I have to say it time and time again, I'm going to say it. The okay. people of Ashford are what got me. No, I mean, to be honest, I, I wasn't. How did you know that I had health issues, by the way? I read it in an article. I'm, I'm, I read it. I read it. <laughs> okay. Uh, yes, I am one of those. Actually, I was talking to an agent the other day. I mentioned I'm terribly fond of. And I said, you know what we're going to do? 
Actually, you can you can pitch this idea for me, by the way. You can do my do my job over there. Okay. Um, pitch it to, Ma- to, to, to Matthew Church, Matthew Up Church, because what I was thinking was I, I I I'm going to set up this society. It's called Socket. Okay. Right. What does Socket mean? You got yeah. Okay. Socket are survivors of cancer in travel. Whoa. Okay. Yeah. So com- survivors of cancers in travel, because I actually I, I have to say. I was diagnosed, I have two cancers, by the way, and I'm here to tell the tale. So I think it's actually, what we should be doing is to say, you know what, it's not always a death sentence and we basically should. So when people realize, because when I went back to um, Vegas, when I went back to um, Luxury Travel Week, the amount of people that came out and they went, oh my God, Paula, it's so great to see you. I had cancer too. And I'm like, what? You know, so nobody talks about it. And I feel very, very strongly about the fact that we should be talking about it, both males and females. And we should say, do you know what? Look at her, for God's sake. She not only had one, but she had two cancers. And there she is. And she's grand. Do you know what I mean? I I absolutely totally agree with you. I know a lot of my friends in the industry and uh, uh, many of them have had cancer and fought through it. Uh, You know, and it's it is. Uh, it is so crucial that we talk about this and, and keep it out in the open that it is a survivable disease. And I'm so thankful that you survived both cancers. Uh, Thank you. I, Thank, I, well, I, actually, to be honest, James, and the reason why, I mean, I, I survived, but I also had great support. And to be honest about it, even to the point of, of Vicky Toneman, Miss, uh, Mrs. Toneman's daughter, who's taking over the Red Carnation, coming here to my home to visit me. Now, that it doesn't get any better. You know, no. it, it, Niall was on every single day. I mean, every day. Mark was on nearly every day as well. Right. I mean, it's amazing that the support. It's amazing the prayers. And I'm, I'm, I'm. Yes, I'm a, a, a card carrying member of, of the church, and I basically have no. I don't make any apologies for that. So yes, I was very lucky and very blessed with all of the prayers from the industry worldwide. Well, you have a lot of friends out there. That's the thing. One of the, one of the things about the hospitality industry and travel in general is that we, it is a small community and everybody knows everybody sure. and, and everybody has friends all around the world and they care about you. It's brilliant. It's, it's, you know what? And that's what I'm saying to you. You say to me like, how, it, it, to be honest, I couldn't wait to get back to work. Now I'm quite sure Nyla would have a different opinion, but don't worry about that. <laughs> <laughs> Well, and I, I have met Vicky as well, and she's a lovely, yeah. lovely person. We've done an interview with her as Delightful. well. Delightful. It's uh, she really is cares very deeply about uh, her whole team, and uh, obviously you're a key member of that team. And not surprised that she would make the trip uh, to see. Thank how you. you. Doing. No, I have to say, I you know, and to be honest, James, as I said, I mean, I can I get up every day, and I thank God for the life that I've had. I mean, I really get up every day, and I mean, if you knew the amount of our team that are on to me on a daily basis. I live on my own, by the way, just in case right. you didn't know, but I do, I live on my own. So the team members know that, you know, there's only, there's only me. If you knew the amount of telephone calls that I even get from our team, literally to say, hi, Miss Carol, how are you? Hi, Miss Carol, how are you feeling? Hi, Miss Carol, how are you doing? You're like, God Lord tonight, you know? So I am beyond blessed. And I say that heart on hand. So quite frankly, uh, this industry is an amazing industry. Yeah. It is the tough, it's only, it's only the strong survive, but quite honestly, it is worth the survival because obviously it is an extraordinary, extraordinary industry. And I'm very privileged and very happy to be a part of it. Now, what, what lies ahead for Ashford Castle? What, how is the castle adapting to, you know, different cast preferences, if any? And of course, adapting obviously to the COVID-19 situation. Uh, and- what new features at the castle have proven to be successful and uh, obviously, you have your your lodge, the new lodge, the beautiful beautiful lodge above the castle, as well as sure. some other new features. And you mentioned all the room renovate the the home the home room renovations. But I'll say that again, room renovations. Uh, and uh, it's really uh, uh, amazing what what they've done with the the, the restoration. But what, sure. what what do you think the future holds? The future is absolutely. Can I just tell you? I mean, I I will tell you. The future is absolutely, it'll be a bit like the 1920s all over again. It will be a bit like my my job may become actually, um, what's the word I'm looking for, Uh, redundant, because there will be no need for directors of sales and marketing, because for the simple reason is the demand will far outweigh the supply of both rooms in the castle and in the lodge. We have 64 64, um, beautiful four-star plus rooms, as you say, in the lodge. And quite frankly, I can see nothing but the demand because there's such a pent-up. People want 
to travel. Right. People want to come. And of course, we offer the perfect sanctuary sanctuary for everybody in our private 350 acre estate. So the future is very, very rosy in my little head. Okay. Oh, that's, that's wonderful. That's wonderful. It would be fantastic. And everybody would start traveling again. And we'd all meet up and, you know, exactly the way we feel. I mean, like, you're lucky. You got to travel. I'm, I don't, I've never been on this island for as long in my entire life. <laughs> no, seriously. I've never been on the island since I was, I was just trying to think, 17 years of age. I have never been on this island for this length of time in my life. Well, they're right. Absolutely. There's a lot of pent-up demand, and we're seeing it now. And we hope uh, by the end of this year, even this summer, that we're going to start to get back to places in Europe, back to Ireland, back to to, to really kind of a normal uh, travel Hopefully. thing. Although I think probably 2022 is more realistic at this stage. Yeah, yeah. I agree with you. Yeah. But I also think, James, that we have to be very cognizant of those that may not survive this. And that right. is an awful lot of our industry colleagues who unfortunately will not or they can't or they've been furloughed and they'll be let go or they've been whatever. And I think we also have to be mindful of the fact that there are a lot of people in those situations. And quite frankly, I think, you know, those of us who are or who managed to, to, to still work, we, are, we really and truly should be very grateful. And no, and I, I, I totally agree. I know when we end up back at a virtuoso conference or something mm -hmm. else, we're going to have to look around and see who's still there and we're, mm -hmm. find out where the people that are missing where they are now. Uh, I have a lot of friends in the industry that have been furloughed and have been laid off and mm -hmm. not sure they'll get a chance to return or they'll return in a new form. Uh, that's the other hopeful sign. I know I'm helping a few of them uh, just to, to find some places, but it is going to be a different industry because of mm -hmm. this pandemic, which has really devastated the travel industry probably more Absolutely. than any other industry. And yes. Absolutely. Uh, and then the other side of it is that, you know, and we, and we, we don't need travel. We have to wait and see what the airlines are doing. We have to see yeah. what access we've got. Where you know, and there's so many you know variables that we just don't know at the moment. Absolutely. Now, what what lies ahead for you and your career? What, what this must be <laughs> more, more a labor. I'm waiting for a job offer, James. What am I going to say? <laughs> but you know, this has become almost a labor of love for you than <laughs> just a job, obviously. And and. <laughs> I, I hope you're there as long as you would like, would like to be there. Uh, Thank you. Well, you know what? And there, there you go. I mean, to be honest about it, I, how fortunate am I that there's nobody actually forcing me to, to consider retirement or consider moving on or consider whatever. So I do consider myself, I genuinely mean it, I do consider myself very lucky. So um, yes, I would like to think that I will be still there when the, you get to visit next. And that could be in a year's time or in three years' time. Because bearing in mind, we have a project in Dublin coming on stream, which is a new hotel in Dublin called right. Hatch Hall. Remember that one? Which one? I'd say again. Hatch Hall. Hatch Hall. Okay. Hatch Hall. So oh. Hatch Hall is the, the, new, the newest uh, Red Carnation Hotel, which will be in our capital city in Dublin, just off St. Stephen's Green, just off. Yeah, oh, wow. I, tell you, I know where that is. Yeah, It's course. perfect. It's just perfect. And when the Tolmans actually do the interior, the design on it, oh my God. So I plan on sticking around until that comes on stream, darling. <laughs> when, is that, when is that going to be? Well, we kind of thought 2022, but I'm going to put it out now to 2023. All right. So well, there you go. Definitely I have to make a visit there, although I'd love to get back to uh, Ashford well before then. Uh, just to James, see, you'd be more than see welcome. you and see uh, Niall Hi, and see all my friends there. And that uh, you do a marvelous job. And But Thank definitely you. Hatch Hall will be something on my uh, Radar. 2023, but don't worry, I'll be keeping you advised. I mean, I'll keep you advised of it. But uh, yeah, and then of course the Forbes Five Star was a great, great pick me up this year to us as well because that was the second year in a row that we were the only hotel in the country to win the for, for, or to be awarded the Forbes Five Star. So yeah, it's all yeah, fabulous. Thank God. Well, well deserved as well. I know the, the property very well. Now, Paula, I want to thank you for uh, taking the time to speak with us on on International Women's Day. This will appear a little far after the after, in a few days, and uh, we're all celebrating this day today. And we've had a lot of coverage today on, on uh, different companies uh, commemorating the, the the day and commemorating women in general and their participation in the industry. Uh, but uh, I've known you for a, a while, and uh, you've always been a Wonderful person, wonderful host, a uh, uh, wonderful person Thanks. to see at, at, at international travel conferences when we're all there. Uh, and we hope that this later this year we'll all get back together again. Thank you. Whether it's Las Vegas or Vienna or 
or somewhere else, London. We'll see what happens. Mm. But uh, I'm looking forward to that date very much. I'll tell you something. You'll be getting the biggest hug that I can possibly manage when I see you again. James, it's been my pleasure. And thank you for the invitation. And happy International Women's Day to everybody who is reading or reading this, because quite frankly, you all deserve to be on as well. Thank you. Absolutely. Well, Paul, again, thank you very much. And I am James Schillinglaw, and this is Insider Travel Report. <laughs>